I don't got nothing against Eminem. I don't want to go through, I don't want to talk about it no more. I don't want to, for 22 years, every time I do an interview, they ask me about Eminem. The fuck you want me to do? A lot of people think that Eminem ruined Benzino's career. However, when you take a look at how things played out from the very beginning, it's a lot deeper than you might have thought. Although he's released several diss tracks where he's absolutely obliterated Zeno on wax, the only person he can blame is himself. My name is Luesta, and today we're looking at how Eminem destroyed Benzino's reputation, and may have even ruined his relationship with his daughter, Koi Ray, in the midst of it. Back in the 2000s, Benzino was just another rapper vying for his place in the mainstream. But the artist from Boston found the cheat code because not only did he make music, he had control of one of the most influential outlets in the culture at the time as a co-owner of the Source magazine. Even though he didn't help start the magazine from scratch, his connection with Dave Mays, the Harvard graduate who founded it, opened doors for him to get involved. Although the specifics of his role were never crystal clear, Dave maintains it was intentionally kept vague, but that he definitely played a crucial role in guiding the content of the magazine. And along with that, cracks in the foundation of this once powerful outlet began to show when Benzino and his group, the almighty RSO, kept getting suspiciously positive reviews. And for some readers, this was the beginning of the end. I'm 44, I remember the source having a shitload of almighty RSO ads every month, and they sucked. Others pointed out that the first major red flag was when Benzino's group received a 5 mic rating, which is the equivalent of a perfect 5 star review for their new album. As his own music kept getting put up on a pedestal by the magazine that he owned, fans of the magazine saw this as a real conflict of interest that could be damaging to their credibility. But unfortunately for the staff at the magazine, Benzino was about to make things a whole lot worse. That's because in 2002, Benzino began gunning at Eminem's neck. You see, Benzino had a huge problem with the fact that Eminem was basically blowing up like crazy around this time. His albums were selling millions of units, he was all over MTV and other music media outlets, and he was being praised as hip hop's best rapper. However, to Zeno, Shady was just proof of everything that was wrong in mainstream rap, and he would use his platform to voice his opinion on the matter, stating, I had a problem with the machine, with a double standard in hip hop. Certain media outlets look at him as the savior and the number one in hip hop, and do not recognize the guys out here that created hip hop. Eminem is just a hood ornament for the machine. You think I could grab my crotch and put my ass in people's faces the way he does? No way. But as long as the color of his skin and his eyes fits what America wants, it's all right. He then went on to argue that Eminem only managed to gain success and profit from controversial lyrics about topics like killing his mother, abusing his girlfriend, and drug use simply because he was white. On the other hand, black rappers had to work much harder to entertain their audience and secure radio play and recognition. Alongside making these bold claims, Benzino also decided to directly attack Eminem by releasing the track Pull Your Skirt Up, where he dubbed Shady a 2003 Vanilla Ice. 2003 Vanilla Ice, how you playing it? If you ask me, you really ain't that nice, you overrated. He also claimed that due to the early publicity the Source magazine provided Eminem, he essentially played a key role in Eminem's rise to fame. You was unsigned hype before you ever met Dre. That's my I birthed your little career, now you owe your life to Ray. And as we know, M isn't someone who's just going to take being dissed by a lesser MC lightly. So shortly after, the first batch of diss tracks aimed at Benzino arrived with Don't Wanna and Nell in the Coffin, which have gone down as one of Eminem's finest responses in history, where he says, You sit behind a fucking desk at the source, butt kissing and begging motherfuckers for guest appearances, and you can't even get the clearances, cause real lyricists don't even respect you or take you serious. It's not that we don't like you, we hate you, period. Since the release of this track, it has been a double-edged sword for Benzino. Because on one hand, he got murdered on it. But on the other, it actually raised brand awareness for him. If you heard of Benzino, it's because of this rap. And if you haven't, it's definitely because of this rap. Rather than taking the loss like a man with a little bit of dignity, as Eminem suggested on the track, this marked the start of Benzino basically waging an entire war against Eminem, using his magazine, The Source, as his primary weapon. For starters, he made sure that Shady never got a perfect 5 mic rating for the Eminem show, which is widely deemed as a classic hip hop album. When the Eminem thing came through The Source, at this point, it's getting disrespectful. So how the fuck am I gonna have this nigga in my, in my magazine? Would you? You're not gonna put nobody in your magazine and give this nigga five mic after this nigga's being disrespectful. Uh, you, 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 you wouldn't do it, man. 
You wouldn't do, nobody would. This might have felt like a win for him back then, but what Benzino didn't realize was that this was the exact moment where it seemed like his tension with Eminem first started getting in the way of his personal and professional life. Because suddenly, he hurt the reputation of the one thing in his life that really made him far more relevant than hip hop ever did. Benzino just didn't understand the art of war. Using the source as a vehicle to diss Eminem wasn't a smart business move. Considering that Interscope, by the way of Universal, owned a chunk of the music industry, he let his emotions get in the way. Benzino admitted that he compromised the magazine's reputation because he was getting disrespected so badly by M. Eminem was fully aware of the missteps Benzino was making at the head of the source, and he made this clear when he appeared on Angie Martinez's show in 2002 and exposed the entire situation. We all know what's going on at the source. Ray Benzino has Dave May shook, and, and you can't play two sides of the fence. You can't be a rapper and own a magazine, own half of a magazine, because then what happens is you call rappers that you like, you call them and you want them to make a guest appearance on your album, and if they don't want to do it because you suck, then that, he's going to take you out that magazine. So you can't play both sides of the fence like that. You just can't do it. Savagely dissed by M, once again on the sauce, after the Eminem show's rating was revealed, Benzino was ready to unveil what he believed would be a major chess move in their ongoing feud. But like everything he's done when it comes to his infatuation with M, it was only going to blow up in his face. From the start of the beef, Benzino's issues with M were allegedly because he was given preferential treatment as a white man in a black culture. The only issue with that is that everyone knows how much of a student of the game Eminem really is. Rival magazine XXL even went on record to counter what Zeno was pushing by saying, Eminem brings together white and black people. He does it while representing rap music in its truest form. The larger he gets, the larger hip hop gets, no matter what anybody says. This dude lives, breathes, eats, and shits hip hop, but everyone has skeletons in their clothes closet, and Eminem was no different. When it came to light that a young Eminem had once recorded a diss track targeting a black ex-girlfriend, including demeaning remarks about black women and slurs, Benzino saw an opportunity he couldn't pass up. You know, we actually went did our homework on M. It was like, we was like um, 2020 investigations and shit, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, we, we found out where he lived, where he grew up, and then I think I was in Puerto Rico. When I got the call from Dave, he was, at, he was in the office saying that it was three white kids that came up there with the tapes. They call it the racist rap hour tapes. In these tapes, Eminem is heard saying the following lines. And here's a place where I like to roam. And all the girls that I like to bone have the big butt. No, they don't, because I don't like that nigga shit. I just here to make a bigger hit. Later in the freestyle, Eminem raps to never date a black girl because they only want you for your money. Although Benzino has claimed that a publication like The Source would have bought the tapes even if he wasn't beefing with M, they probably wouldn't have held a whole press conference to unveil their findings. Or at the very least, published a poster in the magazine of Benzino holding Eminem's severed head in celebration. Don't make this a double standard, Benzino said at a press conference as he spoke to the assembled press. We gotta treat this the same way you treat Mike Tyson, Kobe Bryant, R. Kelly, and OJ Simpson. With that kind of claim, it's clear that Benzino wanted M to be publicly outcast forever. But unfortunately for him, the world wasn't playing ball. And because they had already shown a clear disdain for Shady, it was easy for him to counter. Ray Benzino, Dave Mays, and The Source have had a vendetta against me, Shady Records, and our artists for a long time. Eminem said in a statement. The tape they played today was something I made out of anger, stupidity, and frustration when I was a teenager. I had just broken up with my girlfriend, who was an African American, and I reacted like the angry, stupid kid I was. I hope people will take it for the foolishness that it was, not for what somebody is trying to make it into today. To the dismay of the source's employees, the public took M at his word, and soon, it would have a negative impact on not just Benzino's livelihood, but a magazine that he was now bringing down with him. When Ray went after Eminem, that's when we started to see newsstand sales decline, said Jeremy Miller, the source's COO at the time. Within a year, newsstand sales went from 380,000 to 300,000 to 270,000. That was huge. Facing a rapid downfall, Dave Mays has argued about some of these figures, but does believe that he and Zeno underestimated just how powerful Eminem was. This was a big thing in the music industry. Interscope and Universal Music controlled almost 80% of all the hip hop being sold at that time. Everybody was on Universal or Interscope's payroll. Everybody was getting money and depending on them, no matter whether you worked at a label, worked at a radio station, worked wherever. So a lot of people either didn't say nothing or took that side. But there's a lot of people that I believe 
respected you know, the source's position um, on these things, but just were too scared to speak out and support us and, and because it would have impacted their livelihood. By 2005, both Benzino and Dave Mays were thrown out of the source, and even though Mays might maintain that it was his decision to bet on the internet that led to their downfall, the statement made by Jeremy Miller after their departure suggested otherwise. We're on a mission to win back both readers and advertisers, Miller said. We're going to cover the hip-hop scene from a neutral but still hard-hitting point of view. Notice the use of the word neutral front and center there? Seems like a pretty clear reference to what Benzino and Mays did to Eminem and how it cost the company. As well as losing out on the source, Zeno's rap career didn't exactly flourish from there either. To this day, he's only got one record to his name on a major label and a single chart appearance with his song Rock the Party, which peaked at number 84. Even when records like 2005's Look Into My Eyes had whole skits poking fun at the loss of Eminem's friend Proof, it still didn't help things pick up. Despite all of this, Benzino somehow still thinks there was a victory to be taken from the whole beef. Because in his opinion, it was the racist rap hour tape that made him take a step back from rhyming after the release of his album Encore in 2004. He takes like a five year break after that. Yeah, he had to. How did you feel about that? Did you feel kind of triumphant? Like I, I like, I, yeah, of course, of course. Once again, Benzino being so blinded by his hatred for Eminem has meant that he couldn't consider that just maybe there were some more pressing issues that led M to take a step back rather than his attempts to expose him. Meanwhile, for Benzino, it's still the thing he's most known for and the reason why outlets even want to talk to him for the most part. Even though he claims he's moved on from time to time, Benzino has regularly proven that he'll never fully be able to let go of what Eminem did to him on record. And rather than just affecting his life and career, it's even had a detrimental effect on what should be one of the closest relationships in his life with his daughter. After his rap career essentially fizzled out, Benzino leveraged the name recognition he had and found himself a new role as a cast member of Love & Hip Hop. At this point, it did seem like he was trying to carve out a new chapter, and in interviews around this time, he even extended an olive branch to Shady. What's up, M? You know what I'm saying? Holla at me. Let's, you know, to sit down, have some lunch one time and just meet each other. You know, you never know. We just might like each other. Claiming in the same interview that he never really saw it as beef, there was a brief period during his love and hip hop run where it seemed like Zeno really had let the past go once and for all. But as his run on reality TV shows like Love and Hip Hop, Marriage Boot Camp, and The Next 15 dried up in 2017, it wouldn't be long until he was back dissing Shady yet again. This time, using the poor reception of the record revival and Eminem's fan base as his target. Can somebody tell these weirdo Eminem fans that in this culture of hip hop, they are the subculture? Meaning nobody gives a flying fuck about anything they have to say when it comes to him right now. The album is trash, so take the L and move on. Besides the obvious irony of Benzino telling anyone to move on, his decision to come at M seemed like he was just waiting for the first moment of weakness to pounce on Shady again. Because at this point, it was really the only thing he was doing that could lead to any reporting on his career. So from time to time, when M was releasing something, the cycle was familiar as Benzino would pop out of nowhere with a comment, usually aimed at Shady fans rather than the man himself these days. Face it stands, y'all will always be the hip hop's goofiest, most out of touch fan base, straight bozos. Although these comments were quickly deleted after he got flamed by Shady fans, deciding to aim at Eminem's audience rather than the man himself only made his self-destructive fall from grace even clearer. Because no matter what he said, it seemed like he couldn't touch M. In fact, the furthest his social media campaign got him was Royce the 5'9 taking some time out to bury him. I can't wait till Benzino get on Clubhouse, a front row seat to the most pseudo-toxic masculine tough guy talk the world has ever seen. Clap for this hoe ass so he can try to move on. He's stuck in 06. But while Benzino was grasping for attention, another member of his family was just beginning to get some of her own. Initially known as Trippy Red's girlfriend, as opposed to Benzino's daughter or an artist in her own right, Coyle Ray was starting to really make moves in 2020 after signing with Republic Records. Although she was still pretty inexperienced at the time, the star power was pretty obvious and she really broke out in 2021 when she got a feature from Lil Durk on No More Parties. At first, Koi didn't tell people Benzino was her dad, but eventually, everyone found out. And sadly, Zeno's actions have made things really difficult for her as well. For starters, she's constantly been asked if she's part of the beef with Eminem. I know that anything that has to do with Eminem, I don't have nothing to do with those times, so don't involve me in them. I'm my own person. Claiming that she would ride for her father regardless. I'm, I'm a ride for my father regardless, because right. he's my father. I don't right. give a fuck what anybody says. So if Eminem reached out to do a record with you, would you do it with him? 
No, I, no, hell no, unless, unless I got my father's blessing. Like, I would sit down with my father, first of all, and bring it up to him. Even though Koi has insisted that she'll always put him first, even if they're beefing, the same can't be said for Zeno. I covered the beef between Koi and Benzino extensively in my Nepo Babies video, but all I'll say for now is that there's been plenty of drama. From Benzino claiming that she lied about drug dealing, to mocking her debut album selling 11k, saying things like, if she had a track with Benzino, I would've listened, Benzino hasn't always been consistently in her corner. Although things have been pretty tense between them, Benzino tried at least briefly, to finally let go of his obsession with Eminem. According to him, a series of tweets he issued in 2022 were a direct response to Koi, telling him that she felt his ongoing feud with M was damaging her career. To all at Eminem fans and stands all over the world, he tweeted in March of 2022, the beef is officially over. I'm letting y'all know I have no hate towards any of his fans and recognize his contributions to hip hop. He truly is a part of the culture and one of the best to rock the mic, regardless of his color. Before then appearing on DJ Vlad to explain that he wanted to squash his 20 year beef with Eminem because it was affecting Koi Ray. The only way that I think that I could put this to an end, and again, so it doesn't mess up my kids' careers or have any, Thing to do it is if I just say what I probably should have said a while ago. I mean, Eminem is a part of hip hop. Eminem is a dope artist and he is a part of hip hop. Regardless of what he might have said or done, people change. But the motivation was definitely Koi because her album was dropping. She was like, Dad, I, it's hard for me to have you around me because, you know, these same white people are coming to my shows and they support me. When I was telling her, I'm like, I don't know if they're the same white people. I don't know if Eminem's fans are your fans. And I'm trying to explain it to her. I don't know you have to be worried about that, but if that's if that what you're saying, then I'm gonna correct it. To Benzino, this seemed like a massive step forward for the entire culture. But to most fans, it seemed like he was beating a dead horse and trying to extend a hand to someone who had long since forgotten about him. Let's not forget that 18 years of this beef only existed in Benzino's head and that the importance of the beef was 2002 through 2004. By making his peace with the Eminem situation, Benzino had the potential to help repair what was a strained relationship with his daughter too. However, within two months, his fixation on Eminem undid any progress when Benzino criticized Eminem's induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is just like the Grammys. They have no respect for our culture, black or hip hop. And if you don't agree, you're racist, period, point blank. Trying to do damage control, Koi tweeted out the same day to make it be known that this time, she really wasn't standing with her father. I'm about love, equality, respect, and forgiveness. I have nothing against Eminem. 25 years of my life, all I know is he is a very talented artist and actor. 8 Mile was great. Let's build bridges and get over them before you burn the bridge and burn with it. Since then, Koi and Benzino's dynamic has continued to be frayed to the point that he broke down in tears talking about it and said in November that things may be unsalvageable. Meanwhile, Benzino has vowed to never say his name in an interview again as she doesn't want to be his clout kid. Where they could have been on a positive track if he decided to bury the hatchet for her, Benzino once again just couldn't let go of the beef that has both ruined and ruled his life for years. With that, Benzino seems ready to fade back into irrelevance. But then, a strange thing happened. Eminem suddenly reignited the rivalry. On Doomsday Part 2 from the Lyrical Lemonade album, M decided to throw out a little hook to his old foe, making fun of his notorious lack of a neck, before referencing some rumors that he had sex with another man and that he was in a mountain of debt. But in a move that proves just how much his obsession with M has affected not only Zeno, but those around him, Koi also got dissed on the track. Well, I regret to inform you, hate to spoil the day, but this doesn't bring me joy to say. Guess that Koi LeRae's feet's in the toilet, eh? Damage due to flows, collateral, I suppose. After years of ignoring Benzino as he continued to diss him, M finally had enough. But the only issue is that this once again gives Benzino an excuse to feed his passion for trying to bring down Shady. On his response track, Vulturous, Benzino hits a lot of familiar points, claiming that you invade our culture then insult us, time you get exposed. But this time, Koi was brought into the exchange too, and basically implied that the mainstream business of rap is what's torn him and her apart, rather than anything he might have done himself. In the truth, my daughter had a life that I never had. I'm probably more Boston George than America's dad, but I provided food, clothes, gifts, kept you excited. Now you let the industry really lynch, keep us divided. Most dangerously of all, he mentioned Eminem's deceased best friend and former D12 member Proof as well. You a punk, plan my funeral, please. You shoot who? Square and even go circle the block for Proof. Once again, Benzino was like a dog with a bone, and before M could even reply, he dropped a second diss track, 
This time, he aimed at his A&R skills, saying, So let's go down your stable. Gun left your label, Benny the Butcher left your label, Khan left your label, Royce left your label, Joe Budden left your label, Ortiz left your label, Crooked Eye couldn't save you, Yellow Wolf been out here flopping. And where the hell Cash has been at though? Only heard from Obi Trice only twice, and not a word from Stat Quo. With all them false lines that you pitched them, Shady Records sounds less of a name and more like a description. A chain here, a feature there, besides that, what did he do? Suddenly, Benzino actually found something worthwhile dissing Eminem for. The only issue is that because the rhymes were of a certain caliber, people immediately assumed he didn't write them. Although Cassidy has denied any involvement, Benzino has already taken what was a rare opportunity for him to get respect from hip hop and absolutely nuked it by basically revealing the track was ghost written. I don't go in the studio by myself, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've, I've, I've done that. But for this, you know what I'm saying? I gotta bring my niggas with me and motivation mm -hmm. and bounce shit off of each other and why not? Because, uh -huh. because number one, like, I've always been in groups and I've always been in studio sessions where it was a gang of niggas. Mm -hmm. So when it's time to write a verse, there's always somebody there to get a line. So, you know what I mean? That's, that's what's dope about hip hop. And the Eminem thing was just the opportunity to show the world, you know, like, look, man, I've been doing this. I think my skills and my music got overlooked because of the Eminem you know, mm. and his crazy ass fans. Reading between the lines, it's clear that Benzino still blames both M and his fan base for destroying his career. When in reality, it was his own conquest against Shady that destroyed his magazine and killed off the remaining possibility of success he had. As much as he'd like to think otherwise, these things are set in stone now. In fact, he's still perceived as a clown by so many, to the point that even others who've had smoke with M would still rather side with him than Zeno, such as Joe Budden. I'm with anybody dissing Benzino, yo. 20 plus years on from the beef beginning, the first thing that people think of when they think of Benzino isn't The Source, Rock the Party, or even Coil Ray. It's Eminem. And whether he likes to admit it or not, his undying obsession with Eminem's place in the culture and how unjust he feels it is means that he's done it to himself. So the next time that Benzino wants to assign some blame to everything that's gone wrong in his life and career, there's one place he should be looking and that's directly to the mirror.